Hi, everyone, and welcome back to episode two of Experimenting with Existence. In this episode, we're taking a look at hiking. Again, one of my non-philosophy related interests. It's one of my more recent uh, interests. And so in the part zero video, I offered an introduction to this episode and what I'm gonna be up to in this episode. And so now in this part one video, we're actually gonna start taking a look at the particular hikes that I've done. Starting with then in this part one video, we'll talk about my first rookie effort, my first 14er, Mount Bierstadt. So as is going to be the norm in these videos that follow in this episode, uh, I'm going to begin by offering some context for the hike, you know, discussing sort of what stands out the most to me in terms of memories, offering some specifics in terms of the, you know, the route we took, how long it took us or myself to solo hike, uh, talking about some of that sort of stuff to give you kind of, a, again, some general context for the hike itself. And then I'll end each uh, video by taking a closer look then at the my own personal pictures and videos of the hike itself. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead then and dive into uh, this hike of Mount Bierstadt. So I'll begin, like I mentioned, talking about uh, some of the specs, if you will. Right. So again, we're talking about Mount Bierstadt, and this is the the route we took is considered the standard route for Mount Bierstadt. It's called the West Slopes, and I'll provide a link to the uh, route on 14ers.com in the notes below. Uh, this is ranked as a class two peak or ra rather route to the peak. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a, in a little bit here. I find that somewhat interesting, but uh, again, it is considered a class two route. Uh, the elevation of Mount Bierstadt is 14,066 feet. We, you start at, and I should have elaborated more on this. I, I mentioned it fleetingly in the intro video but I should have elaborated more on the significance of elevation gain. Right? That is a critical component, especially in terms of um, determining the commitment needed for the hike. Uh, and I, again, I did allude to it in the intro video, but I don't know that I necessarily underscored it as much as, as I could have or I should have. Uh, and so again, elevation gain is a huge factor in these hikes. And so uh, one of the nice things about Bierstadt, if it's your first initial you know, effort, is that you start off pretty high up at 11,669 feet. So that's where you start. That's where the trailhead is. And then you go up to 14,066, like I said, for a total elevation gain of 2,850 feet. And if you do the math on that, you know, it doesn't add up to 2,850. That's because you are, you know, you're not just going straight up. There's also some descents, ascents, you know, on the way up. So again, the top of the mountain is 14,066, and you begin at 11, 11,000, what was it, 669. Okay, so um, again, those are some of the specs in terms of where you're starting, where you're ending up. And total elevation gain, given that you're not just going on a straight line, right, but there's some ups and downs along the way, you're gaining 2,850 total feet. Um, so, and relatively speaking, that's not a whole lot for these 14 years. And I should have mentioned this maybe in the intro video as well, video as well. And that's that some folks that are into this sort of thing and like to bag 14 years, they consider anything less than 3,000 total feet of gain, um, like not official. But of course that's totally up to the person, you know, doing the hikes and what they want to consider official for themselves. Uh, but I did want to just throw that out there. That is kind of like a norm for some of some hikers of 14 years is that they, they want to try to hit that 3000 feet uh, elevation gain. But again, if you're just doing the standard route for beer stat, you're not going to hit that. It's the total of 2,850. The route length, of the, the so the total mileage you're doing uh, for the route is 7.25 miles, so not super long, especially you know compared to like the one I just did, which was 14 miles on uh, Pikes Peak. So I was trying to figure out you know our start time, our end time, and the total time of the hike. We started off so I was um, so I hiked with uh, Dan and or sorry Jamie and Josh on this particular hike. And so I was in discussions with those guys trying to recall the details for this hike leading up to this video. And you got to remember, this is the furthest one back. So it's 
we're drawing on, uh, you know, our memories aren't as good for this one, uh, is the upshot here. Uh, but to the best of my recollection, we started about 7.45 in the morning and ended about 2.45 in the afternoon. So that's about seven total hours. Uh, now we do wonder actually, because Josh says he has a picture of me back at the trailhead actually at 1.45. And so that would be a total uh, time of six hours, which actually in my mind, given all the, the factors that play here, kind of makes more sense that it would have only taken us six hours. It took us either six or seven hours, and we definitely started at 7.45 local time. Now, whether we ended at 1.45 or 2.45, I guess that's kind of up in here. I'm, I'm leaning more towards 1.45 and a six hour total uh, time period here. This, uh, the date, I mentioned it's the first one, right? We're going the furthest back here. It's July 10th, 2020, so uh, a little more than three years ago at this point. The fellow climbers I mentioned, right, Jamie and Josh are joining me uh, on my ascent of Beerstat. We stayed in, we, here's another sort of detail that we couldn't necessarily get precise. We want to stay, say that it was Blackhawk, which is the closest, or the, the, the town that we stayed in, uh, but we can't remember that with 100% certainty. It was around Blackhawk at the very least. So that's where we stayed. Now I'm going to offer, usually, or at least my intent here is going forward, kind of a, a difficulty rating for each of these hikes. Uh, and then also kind of my overall rating in terms of how good the hike was in general. So in terms of its difficulty, especially now having done 13 peaks altogether, I, I feel like I have some grasp of, you know, what's a difficult 14, or at least when it comes to class one and class two, you know, peaks, what kind of constitutes something that's more difficult versus easier. And so again, remember the scope and what I'm tackling here and what my experience is with, and that's just class one and class two 14ers in Colorado here. Um, so again, how difficult was it given those parameters? I would say on a scale of zero to 100, where zero is like taking a nap and 100 is like running a marathon, let's say. Um, I'm gonna put it at say a 65. So zero, you're taking a nap, right? Doing nothing. And 100, you're running a marathon or um, you know, at the very end, uh, at the worst points possible, Right. Um, imagine that in terms of running a marathon, that's 100. I would say doing this hike of your stat, this standard route is somewhere around a 65. Um, none of these 14ers are easy, but having said that, of the 14ers I've done, I've definitely put it on the easier end of the spectrum. There's a reason why this is not only Josh and you know my first 14er, but it's oftentimes the first 14er for people that come to this you know for the first time. It's their their rookie effort as well. And again, there's a reason for that because it does tend to, I would say, um, lean towards a class one and not a class two. We'll get into again why it's ranked a class two here in a moment, but it's really only because of one particular se section of the hike. And then, you know, how would I gauge the hike overall, the experience overall, my experience climbing Mount Beerstadt and I would say at the outset here that given that this is my first experience of a 14er, that's naturally going to, I think, in some sense, enhance it because overall it was a good experience. Now, if it was really treacherous and terrible, maybe it would have made it even worse, right? But since, that's, I, since it was a good experience overall, um, I think that kind of skews maybe my overall rating of the hike in general as well. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. But overall, I give it a, out of 100, you know, 100 is like, the perfect experience you can imagine. Everything goes right and you just have the time of your life. Zero, you know, I guess you you wake up, I was gonna say wake up dead, but maybe yeah, you don't wake up, right? You end up dead, let's say a zero. Um, you know, hopefully I'm never rating one of these a zero. Uh, so, you know, zero to hundred, where would I put this? Probably a, like a 72, let's say. Uh, it was a great experience. It was a great hike in particular, the features, and we'll get into these here in a moment. Um, those were noteworthy and you know, the hike itself was beautiful and so on. It wasn't overly difficult, which made the first time experience that much easier. It was with a couple of buddies, you know, longtime friends. So I, obviously that's going to enhance the experience. Uh, and it was my first, first time climbing a 14 year. So it was definitely overall really good. Now, you know, what's holding it back or why isn't it even higher? Because there are, you know, I have gone on subsequent 
climbs where the views were even more spectacular. Um, Yale comes to mind, for example. So while Bierstadt was a great experience, the hike was awesome. You know, it can get even better as I've experienced um, subsequently. Okay, so let's move forward and talk a little bit about the mountain itself, Mount Bierstadt. So again, this is, we're talking about the standard route up to Mount Bierstadt, and that's ranked a class two as a suggested that's ranked a class two by 14ers.com i should say uh specifically here's how 14ers.com ranks the four major components of these hikes exposure low rock fall potential moderate route finding low and commitment low so everything low with the exception of rock fall potential which they deem moderate and for what it's worth i again it's been three years but i don't remember any sort of rock fall issues Nothing stood out as being particularly dif particularly difficult about this climb, including you know rock fall issues. I don't remember any s sort of you know any such issues related to uh, again rock fall or any issues really in general. Um, I could you know therefore definitely see a case for this being classified as a class two and not a class or sorry class one and not a class two uh, route um, because it really is overall I would say um, on the easier end of the spectrum. You know, so, you know, why is it deemed class two? Well, to, you know, the authors of 14ers.com, to their credit, you know, they do actually explicitly say why they classified as a class two. And they suggest that the final pitch of 200 feet, quote, is the crux of the route and the reason it's rated class two. Without a trail, work your way up through the boulders, staying on or just left of the ridge crest, end quote. And so, as they intimate here, the re whole reason why it's probably classified or that they classify it as a class two versus class one has to do with the fact that it has that scramble on the very last portion of the climb of the last, the final pitch of say 250 feet as they, they suggest. Uh, that is, a, is the most difficult portion of the hike and it does entail some scrambling. But I don't remember that um, standing out as being overly difficult, but I will include some pictures of the Final pitch, so you can kind of get get an idea of what it exactly we're we're talking about here, um, and whether or not you know how difficult it, it it might seem to to you for whatever it's worth. Um, but again, that's why they suggest it's a class two, not a class one, is because of that final pitch, that final portion of scrambling at the very top. Another noteworthy feature about beer stat is that again you're starting, I would say, higher up than you usually are for these 14ers. This is above, I want to say above tree line, right? So which explains then the noteworthy feature here, and that's at the first third, right, of the hike, which I talked about in the intro video. Typically, that first third of the ascent, you're dealing with a dense forest and you're trying to navigate through uh, a forest where everything looks the same. But that absolutely was not the case at all here. Like I guess I said, you know, you're starting above tree line and you're actually far from being in a dense forest. You're actually in the complete opposite in a wide open, uh, incredibly vast and beautiful valley. Uh, so that really stands out about your status. Uh, every other hike, I wanna say almost uh, without exception that I've done, I can't think of any others that this isn't true for. They all start again with a, a hike through a dense forest to begin with until you get to the tree line. Not the case here. And so it was def that definitely stands out about beer stack, um, which again can be kind of a, a nice thing as well. Uh, there are some difficulties associated with navigating through the forest as I've intimated in the intro video. So I mentioned the scrambling at the top. So that's what the 14ers.com mentioned as being the reason for classifying this as a class two route. That was definitely memorable. Um, it was memorable as being in the sense that it was fun. Right? I didn't get, there wasn't any scary exposure, at least that I remember. Um, so for me, again, they might, that might be the impetus for them classifying it as class two, but since there wasn't really any scary exposure associated with it, at least for, in, from my perspective, I still don't see why you wouldn't necessarily classify this as a class one overall. Um, but again, there, that is the most, certainly the most difficult portion of the hike. I found it again challenging and fun. You're trying to work your way up, as is often the case with these 14ers. Up, oh, um, you're trying to work your way up the final pitch, and that entails a good, good amount of scrambling. We're 
working with your hands and going from big rock to big rock typically, uh, as is the case here in Beer, um, beer Stat. Um, so, so yeah, that definitely, I do remember that final uh, pitch and you are definitely ready to be done climbing up at that point. And so that, you know, that does make it more challenging that it's at the very end there. Um, and that it's also the steepest then and entails that scrambling. You know, it's certainly not easy and it certainly stands out. It is something I remember. Another noteworthy feature of Beerstat and that we should spend a little time talking about is its neighboring 14er, Mount Evans. And not only that, but specifically the sawtooth, which is the label for the basically the ridge in between Mount Bierstadt and Mount Evans. Mount Evans is slightly higher than Mount Bierstadt for what it's worth, but they are, you know how, like I mentioned Grays and Tories and DeCalibron, Democrat, Cameron, Lincoln, and Bross. Certain combos of these 14ers are um, thought of together because they're in close proximity. And these two are often linked together for the same reason. They are the closest peaks to Denver, which is, you know, then it's not surprising why they're the most, at least your status in, in particular, it's no surprise then why it's so popular and why it's not just my first 14er, but for many people, it's their first 14er. Again, given its location, proximity to Denver, right? So Denver's, let's say, in here somewhere, right? And then you, here you have, just to the west, your stat and, uh, your stat and Evans. Right, right by each other. Now, contrary to some of these other combos that I referenced, Grays and Tories and Decalibron, these two, they're not easily, you can't easily do both of them. And I, I say that because to get, right, to do both of them, at least in a manageable amount of time, you have to tra traverse the gnarly sawtooth, which we saw people uh, <clears throat> traversing the sawtooth while we were on the summit of Beerstadt. And it was incredible. Um, I remember Josh reflecting on this at various periods of, you know, and just how scary it was because it uh, it's not easy. It's not like going from Gray's to Tory, Tory's Peak, which, uh, again, I've done and will be the subject of a future uh, video in this episode. You can easily do some of these. This is not easy. You have to do you know, technical moves, uh, wear equipment, and so on. So this is not one that we're, we're going to be doing, uh, at least for me, ever presumably unless something significant happens. Uh, so that's certainly a, a noteworthy feature about Beerstadt. And so while you might, a lot of people, most people, probably the significant majority, when they do grays, they, they also mark off Tories. That's not the case with these two. And so no surprise then that I'm still missing Mount Evans. So uh, it, not that Mount Evans is difficult, but again, it's not one that you can sort of easily do when you go to Beerstadt or vice versa. You have to go across the sawtooth, which is not easy. So Mount Evans, I still have that one on the list. It is a class two, ranked slightly, as being slightly more difficult than Beerstat for what it's worth. And it is slightly higher than Beerstat as well. So the, I guess the final, since I already mentioned the proximity to Denver, the final thing I would mention is, that stood out to me at least um, or that not, not, not that necessarily stood out, to me, stood out to me, but that I think is what something that Mount Bierstadt is known for in general, and that's the mountain goats, the wildlife in general. A lot of these 14ers are known for that, but in particular on Bierstadt, I think you pretty much always see mountain goats. <clears throat> so we kind of knew that going in, but the degree to which they are comfortable around humans, that certainly wasn't something I was expecting these goats will come right up to you, as you'll see. Uh, and they'll, I, I spent, I literally chilled with these goats for five minutes at a time where we just both stopped. They were five minutes away, or five minutes, five feet away from me. And we just stopped and shared a moment of philosophical reflection. Uh, so that was, you know, that definitely, and that's not just, a, I think, a one time oh, happened to be the case scenario. I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, Mount Beerstadt is known for Again, in particular, these mountain goats. <clears throat> okay, so let's wrap up before diving into and taking a closer look at the pictures and videos from the 
hike itself. Let's offer some final thoughts here. You know, what stands out the most to me about this experience? Uh, first, like I mentioned earlier, it was a great rookie experience. Great first experience. <coughs> Excuse me. While it was challenging and certainly gave me the physical workout I was looking for and sense of accomplishment uh, that I was, you know, that I appreciate and discussed in the intro video, it wasn't overly difficult or challenging, you know, at the same time. So it was manageable. It wasn't overwhelming. Um, granted, we were all you know, super exhausted at the end. You definitely feel a sense of accomplishment for a reason. Uh, but overall, great experience, I remember, and um, always going to look back on this rookie effort fondly. I love being able to I loved being able to share that first experience, and I think it makes it a lot easier to do it with you know, fellow climbers and specifically you know, lifelong friends. That certainly helped um, you know, in terms of whatever difficulties there were, managing those always helps to have uh, friends along with you. And speaking of which, sometimes I'll, you know, after investigating a particular route, uh, I might decide that I'd rather hold off on doing, say, a solo climb and wait until I can do it with friends because it does help in various respects. And so specifically, you know, I, I um, went on a, a family trip out to Colorado a little less than a month ago, and I did Pikes Peak, and I was also planning to do Mount Princeton. But after looking into it a little bit, I realized um, this requires quite a commitment. Um, there are some gnarly sections of the route. This is probably one I would rather conquer with others versus doing myself. So, um, you know, I think I, I should have maybe emphasized how much that can help at times, right? Climbing these four tuners with others. I should have mentioned maybe that and emphasized that more in the intro video, but that certainly helped here as well in this rookie effort, being there with lifelong friends. So what do I, what will I remember the most? Uh, the mountain goats for sure. The, the initial phase of the hike. So as I mentioned, it's just wide open in this valley. There's a, a big lake from my recollection. And then you go along and through this meadow, a lot of it's boarded and you go along a creek for a, a long portion of that initial route uh, or initial phase of the route. Just a really uh, interesting, beautiful first phase of the, the hike. Uh, that definitely stands out. Um, and then that sense of exhaustion, feeling that sense of exhaustion after completing a 14 or feeling that for the first time, you know, I'll never forget that uh, either. So those three things kind of stood out again, the most initial phase, uh, the mountain goats coming right up to you and being your homies, you know, uh, up close and personal. And then that feeling that uh, sense of exhaustion and at the same time accomplishment uh, that accompanies conquering a 14 or experiencing that for the first time that will always stand out in my mind. Real quick before we again turn to a glimpse of the pictures and videos from the hike itself, I wanted to mention what the fellas, other fellas on the hike had to say. So I did, as I mentioned earlier, talk to them briefly about uh, via text uh, about their memories or recollections of the hike, trying to solicit any input they might have. And so here's what they had to say. And this is just quoting our correspondence verbatim. So Josh, uh, he responded first, and he has such an eloquent way of putting things at times. So he, he says, quote, Beerstadt was my first 14er. My virginity was broken by that beautiful mountain. So I remember quite a few things. The bouldering at the end was really challenging and fun. Seeing the mountain goats literally walk right up to us and past us was awesome. The false summits were something I wasn't expecting. So that made it seem more daunting at the end but also made it feel all the more rewarding when we finally got to the top. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't even mention that there are some false summits. You know, I alluded to how there are oftentimes false summits when it comes to these 14ers in the intro video, but I didn't mention specifically in this video yet, uh, but there are these false summits then as you're ascending your stat as well. And so that's what he's alluding to here. And then I chimed in and a little bit later then Josh responds, quote, enjoy the little creek that we hiked next to you for a while. Also enjoyed the valley in the middle. Overall, I enjoyed the variety of terrain and scenery. And then Jamie responded, quote, I feel like I remember something about a great, big, huge, open, green, beautiful valley. And I was wondering, how many adjectives can you throw in there, Jamie? But again, he says, I feel like I remember something about a great, big, huge, open, green, beautiful valley. 
where you could just see mountain range surrounding it like a bowl or something. Does that sound familiar? And Josh responds, yes, agreed, James. The whole first mile at the beginning was really open, which I liked. We weren't completely covered in trees, which was nice for me. And so again, that captures some of my sentiments that I mentioned earlier. All right, the, the first portion of the hike really stands out as being unique and different from at least all the other 14ers I've experienced thus far. And I think that's it uh, in terms of providing context for Mount Bierstadt. Let's go ahead and then take a closer look at the pictures and videos from the hike itself. And I have to say as well here at the outset that I committed a rookie mistake. I can't remember what exactly happened, whether it was I forgot my phone or it wasn't fully charged or whatever the case was, I didn't have access to my own phone. And so I had to rely on Josh for all the pictures and videos for for, from this hike or for this hike, uh, whereas that has not been an issue henceforth, right? So I, I learned a few things with each of these, uh, each of these hikes, right? Um, so at, at any rate, thank you, Josh. Shout out to Josh. Appreciate that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look then at the hike itself. So we're just going to go through what Josh has for us sequentially here. And so naturally we begin the big open meadowy area and just really picturesque uh here's the lake i had mentioned once in the uh, video when i was giving context and i started to question myself if this lake actually exists because i couldn't i couldn't read anything about it but sure enough there it is uh, with us taking a picture next to each one of us and so uh here's another picture on the way up i love this picture of josh pointing the way one thing that does stand out about beerstad is that you can see the peak for a lot of the, the hike and so I never mentioned that earlier either but again this is on the way up um, pretty much wide open uh, for the majority of the hike uh, which is really nice here's another nice little uh, group photo I noticed uh, that Josh had to take most of these pictures himself including the ones of himself when I mean, they were selfies I wish uh, you know I'd been more cognizant of that and helping him out but anyway this was really a, uh, something I wish, I wish I had mentioned in the context. Uh, you know, seeing snow for the first time in July, that was kind of, or at least that I can remember, that was kind of crazy. Um, and then here's the summit. We've reached the summit. I was the king of the mountain there. I think that's why Josh snapped that photo. Um, you'll notice here, as these pictures unfold, that Josh changes his hat on the summit. Let's go ahead and dive into one of the videos. We, we have reached the, the summit. Video. Jamie is going to do an existential video. What kind of video is yours going to be? It's going to be a normal one. Uh, documentary style. I don't want to do technology. We're as high as we can out. get. Fourteen thousand feet. What? Are, what? Are you, what was it? Fourteen thousand. Fourteen two two. Uh -huh. 14, was it fourteen thousand two hundred even? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think it's fourteen thousand. Okay, thank you. I thought it was under a hundred. I thought it was like fourteen thousand, and then like something less than a hundred. Now we'll return to some pictures until we get to our next video when we encounter the mountain goats. So uh, oh, here's a sign we had to borrow. Uh, I won't have one for a quandary. It was just the conditions didn't permit it. But uh, from hike three onward, I'll bring my own sign to and, and have a picture of it on each summit. Um, what am I doing here? I have no idea. Talk about exposure. Jamie's going to play the same game here as well. And did somebody say something about mountain goats? Should I be at all leery about this? I'll just let him go his way. Hi, hey, buddy. You're doing good, buddy. You're almost to the top. Encourage him. Encourage. Brad, you're not encouraging. I don't want to do anything. Okay, some things to note from that last video in case you didn't catch them. Josh and I literally said the exact same thing at the beginning of the video. And then I thought it was pretty funny at the end how I said I didn't want to do anything, um, let alone encourage, encourage him as Josh was imploring me to do. Uh, and that kind of captures the sense, you know, of how you're just exhausted and you know, at a certain point, and uh, 
you're ready for it to be over. And I think uh, I was echoing those sentiments. And uh, this is the mountain goat I shared a reflection with. This is a snapshot of him up close and personal with me. Josh snapped these pictures shortly after his video from before. And one thing I appreciate about this particular picture is notice how camouflaged these mountain goats are. Can you even see them in the picture? Take a moment and try to find them. I know you can see Josh, but can you see the mountain goats? Let's see another video. Believe it or not, despite not wanting to do anything, I did eventually make it back down to the trailhead. Uh, granted, I couldn't point straight, let alone think straight or do much of anything else, um, but we all uh, eventually did make it back. Speaking of which, let's take a look at another one of Josh's videos. I'm making a documentary here. Finished beer set. It was difficult, but exhilarating. It was worth it. it felt great. Hardest part was the middle hour and a half. Would you fellas agree? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so James, give me your thoughts. Well, it's pretty hard and uh, got to eat a lot of food to get up the mountain. Yes, I agree. Water. Brad? It's good. Exactly what he said. You concur? Yeah. I concur as well. I would say food was key, even more so than hydration. Even overall, it was a great show. It's a great show. James enjoyed the movie. Push play. Naturally, we went out and celebrated our feet later that night. Uh, Josh seemingly took as many pictures of us drinking beer here to celebrate as he did of the hike. Uh, but we definitely, you know, enjoyed the whole experience enjoyed celebrating afterwards uh i'm gonna go ahead and turn to what i think is a pretty funny video of uh where we stayed and uh i will conclude then by turning to a really interesting sign that we made a special trip to to take a picture of before we left i'll conclude with that before then turning to part two i think you're a better narrator you're on already dude all right well that's a good beginning Josh walking off. All right, this is the place where we made all our memories. The bathroom. The bathroom, yes. The special hot tub, hot tub rules that Josh didn't want to read. The uh, gaming table upon which one game was played. Nice kitchen. The 30 additional games I didn't need to bring. This is a front door that I'm opening. This is a vehicle belonging to Josh Herring. There's our hot tub. Pretty cool little area. It's beautiful out. Yeah. Sunroom. Slash bedroom. Yeah. Every room has multiple beds. Well, upstairs has. Cool grill. Got multiple splinters on this deck. Not, not liking it. I'm out here barefoot again. Cool little back area here. There's a human being in the bathroom. Just doing a quick tour, dude, don't worry. There's nothing to worry about. Everything's okay. He looks concerned. <laughs>
this video going to the government? Mm. Yes. They Everything goes to the government. They've already they're captured. Yeah, they're right. Time right now. Yes. So you only slept on one of your five beds, Josh? I did. Oh, I think bad. I laid on that one for a while. Does that I think I laid on one of them for a while. Yeah, we'll count it. There's the fan that was very important for me. You all right in there, Jamie? A lot of groaning going on. This is a cool deck. I laid down for a couple hours under the stars last night. Out here, it's pretty cool. All right. Dude. I think somebody's mowing outside. <laughs> Any last words or grunts? Did you? Did I? Oh, this is the PG version. Did I what? USB. Oh, I don't get that. Thumb drive, or does Jamie have one? Grunts, Jamie? Mm. All good things must come to an end. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this part one video documenting my rookie effort of climbing a Colorado 14er, specifically conquering Mount Beerstadt. And I did that again along with, as you've seen, Jamie and Josh. So thanks to them again for joining me on this hike and for joining me really on the trip in general. Again, hopefully you enjoyed uh, taking a closer look at this hike. And in terms of part two, then we'll, we'll go ahead and look at Mount Quandary, which is the only winter hike I've done. It was also the first solo hike I did. And, you know, certainly... Um, quite a bit different than this first hike let's just say that so stay tuned for that until next time thanks